Hey guys, this is a quick video on how to create your own terminal games or interactive terminal stuff using a game engine that I wrote myself on the .NET framework. So right off the bat, let me show you a little demo. Alright, so we got this little menu screen and you can either play or you can exit. Just use the arrow keys. Let's go ahead and play. Move with the WASD keys fire with the space key and just shoot the oncoming um, airplanes. Oh shit. <laughs> Damn it, I suck at this. Ah, son of a... Okay, so as you can see, a plane crashed into me and then I died and game is over. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, just quickly walk through creating a game with you. Um, so in case you're interested in using the engine, uh, you, you can see how easy it is to get something up and running. Okay, so we got a blank uh, main over here. The first thing that you want to do is create a scene. In the constructor, you specify the width and height of your scene in characters. So we'll make this 80 characters wide and, I don't know, 30 characters tall. Now create entities to go in your scene. So we're going to create an entity. The entities constructor takes a 2D array of characters, which is the graphics for the entity, essentially. So let's create that up here. call it graphics we're just gonna make this entity be an equal sign an equal sign and just two rows of that why not okay so this entity is just gonna be four equal signs Make sure we pass that in the constructor. All right. Now make sure that you add your entity into the scene. And that's it. Let's run. Well, sorry, that's not quite it. Now you want to start your game. So this starts the main loop. So you pass in a starting scene. And then uh, uh, the window's width and the window's height. Right now, we'll make the window and the scene the same size. But you can have, I think I covered this in previous video, in my previous video, but the um, window, the scene can be bigger than the window, and then you can move the window around to visualize different parts of the scene. So that's why you have to specify a starting scene, but you can always do game.scene equals some other scene you know, to change the scene. All right, but this is all the code that you need. Let's go ahead and see what we got. All right, hopefully this font's not too tiny, but you can see our four equal signed entity right here at position zero, zero of the scene. Now let's just go ahead and change his position. So we're gonna set his position, at least his X position to, uh, no, no, 20 characters to the right, and let's just see, make sure he moves. Yep, that's 20 characters to the right. All right, now this is very static. We just got an entity and it's just sitting there. Oftentimes in a game, the first thing that you want to do is add some dynamicness, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So just some stuff moving around. Um, now, most game engines have that, uh, a basically, most entities in most game engines have a callback, right? A function that gets executed several times a second. This function is usually called something like update or on frame. I've just called mine update. So what we want to do is we know that the entity's update function gets called, let's say 30, 40, 50, or 60 times a second. Um, so every time it's called, we're going to move a little bit. Okay. So the way that it works in my game engine here is that the entity has an updated uh, event and this event is emitted every frame 
So if you're running at 60 frames per second, then your event is going to be emitted 60 times a second. All right. And when the event is emitted, it tells you in this DT argument how long since the last time it was emitted. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to increment the x position of this entity by, uh, by 1 times dt. All right, let's get rid of this line and let's watch the entity move one character a second to the right. There it is. Okay, now the next thing that you often want to do in games is collision. You want to know when you've hit other stuff. Um, so we're going to create a second entity and see when our original entity hits that. And if so, we're going to delete the second entity. All right, so let's go ahead up here. We're going to create entity 2. And we're going to give entity 2 the same exact graphics. We're going to make sure to add entity 2. And let's make entity 2 start at x position of, uh, I don't know, 8. Right now, in the original entity's um, uh, update event, we're gonna continue to move him to the right. Every time we move him, though, afterwards, we're gonna check if he's colliding with entity two. So, if entity, if his bounding box is colliding with entity two's bounding box, then what we want to do is remove. Uh, entity 2 from the scene. All right, let's see if this works. So we got entity 1 moving to the right, collides with entity 2, and entity 2 gets removed from the scene. Okay, so so far we've learned how to create a scene, how to create some entities, how to add the entities to the scene, how to remove them, how to do something uh, in the update method of your entities and how to do basic collision detection, how to check when one entity collides with another. Now I want to explain timers. So you know that you can use the update event to, um, con to do something you know, with respect to time, but oftentimes it's more intuitive to just think of things in terms of timers. So you want to say, you know, I want to do this thing every two seconds. Or I want to execute this function every five seconds. Um, this game engine provides an easy way to do that. So let me just show you that. First of all, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this update um, event. And we're going to just use a timer now to do some things. So first, create a timer. In the constructor of your timer, uh, there's two parameters. The first one specifies the number of times that this timer will, will fire. So if I put a four here, it means that this timer is gonna fire four times. The second parameter is the period. So how long between the fires? So for example, four two here means, the four means execute, you know, fire four times. The two means uh, fire every two seconds. So what's gonna happen is the timer is gonna fire and then wait two seconds and then fire and then wait two seconds, and then fire, and then wait two seconds, and then fire. So four fires, and they happen every two seconds. Now if you want the timer to fire an infinite number of times, then just put negative one for the first argument. So that's what we want here. Okay, now what we want to do is um, go ahead and start the timer, and don't forget to add the timer to the game. So we're going to add timer, all right. Now we're going to uh, basically respond to the timer's fired event. So every time the timer fires, this event is emitted, and we just specify what we want to do when this event is emitted. All right, and all I'm going to do, again, something simple, I'm going to take entity, the first one, I'm going to increment his y position by, I don't know, three. So every two seconds, he's going to move three down, Let's watch our timer at work. Okay. Now, when you want to stop, uh, you know, the timer, you can basically 
uh, do timer dot stop I believe nope <laughs> I guess you can't do timer dot stop because I haven't implemented that yet but I will in the future so if you're watching this in the future you'll, you'll have a stop method um, also right now you'll have to well, I guess you can stop it right now if you do um, game dot yeah you can do game dot remove timer so right now you can stop it by removing the timer okay so one way to deal with to do something with respect to time is to use the update event of entities and then use that delta time parameter to kind of mess with time right that's one way second way is to use a timer um, but even though a timer is a little more intuitive than the update event it's still a little bulky there's a decent amount of code that you have to write right you got to create it you got to start it you got to add it um, oftentimes you know you just want to do something one time in the future um, so I have a shorthand way of doing that so let's say that you want to move you know you want to in two seconds from now you want the entity to be at position 1010 um, here's a very easy way to do that without writing a, a lot of code at all so let's get rid of all of this all right, so just do game dot do later all right what do you want to do later the first one is your, uh, you know, what you want to do. This takes no parameters. And it returns nothing. Okay. So what do we want to do? We just want to take entity, and again, something simple. We're gonna put his x position to I don't know 30 this time. We're gonna go big. So, and then the second parameter of the do later uh, method says, and how long do you want to do that thing? Um, so let's say uh, we'll do it in four seconds just so you guys have to wait <laughs> um, Okay, so in four seconds, you know do this Which happens to be just set the X position of the entity All right now see how that, that's a lot easier, right? It's really this is one line I just put it on like three because I have mass a massive font here for you guys But that's really one line. All right, so let's see one two Mississippi three Mississippi Four. There we go, and it jumped. And that's it. Those are the basics. Um, now everything that I showed you here in this little example that I did, those are kind of spread out through these examples that I have over here in the example folder. So I have example one, two, three, four, five, and then I have a plain shooter example, which you saw in the very beginning of the video. So um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna work on this game engine anymore. I, I did have plans of adding sound. I might do that just to kind of complete it, uh, but I might not. <laughs> it just depends on how I feel really. But I think if you wanted to create little simple uh, console graphical stuff, you know, it's available to use right now. And as you saw, I think it's very easy to use and it runs very quickly. Um, so I'll have a link to the uh, code you know, in the description of this video, and hopefully you guys give it a try. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.